quack a doodle do what is up fellow birds the spiral it is your friend and pal fearsome here with the hybrid melee musketeer guide of 2020 where i will show you all things hybrid melee musketeer i will help you with gear i will help you with pets i will help you with powers you will know what to train you will get help with your companions and you will get help with how to play the class in general so let's get started shall we all right guys before we get started here's a quick sneak peek at what i have planned for next thursday at 3 p.m central time i hope you guys tune in now you guys may think you have a cool house but but can it do this i don't think so so if you want to learn how to put cannons inside of a tower inside of your house and have a rug run leading all the way up and build the great wonders of the world right here in your pirate 101 castle as well as how to teleport inside of a pot i'll be discussing that in my next upload so stay tuned for that let's get right back into the video shall we now you may ask but ducky what's wrong with standard musketeer and in reply i would say you may think your standard musketeer is cool and all, but can it do this? I don't think so. Epic Kit. Double Tap. Burst Fire. Oh yeah. Double Tap. Double Tap. Blade Storm. Burst Fire. Relentless, Relentless. First fire, bada boom, we just one shot a privateer, boys. And that, my friends, is why Hybrid Melee Musketeer is the best strat in this game. And if you disagree, you have an ego the size of Montana, and I will debate you here live on this YouTube channel. Don't even try and argue with me, because I'm the best player in two cartoon games. Now, guys, as I make this video, um... I just wanted to point something out. If you want to navigate through this video, because a lot of you guys know some of this stuff, you can go ahead and go to the description where I will have some timestamps. Um, just click on the particular timestamp where you are looking for some information. Like uh, some people skip straight to the gear because they already know where to farm. Or some people already know how to make their way to Beast Jet and other basic things like that. Once again, guys, I'm making this guide to be as helpful as possible to everyone. So, um, that being said, I made it so you can navigate past the parts you don't need, but I also added the parts that some players need explaining for. I'm, I'm here to help all of you guys. So, that being said, you know, I'm going to show you where to get some of this gear and stuff. All right, guys, I am right here where it all starts. Avery's Court, where the pirate life begins, and I'll be showing you how to get from Avery's Court to each and every place that you will need to go to in order to obtain the gear in order to play Hybrid Melee Musketeer. So let us get started. You can press M in order to obtain the map, but we are first going to go to this guy right here called Mickey Dugan. Now, you should be able to go to this guy and if you have not already you will have the ability to gain the quest called silly pet tricks by interacting with this guy over here pressing x as you can see i have already started silly pet tricks and once you complete it up to a certain point you can go right over here again on the map um, it is right over here by the musketeer trainer as you can see there's a nice little boat over here and if you interact with this boat over here by pressing X, you will go to Bestia. See, transport the Bestia. Now it's just taking a little while to load, but you can go ahead and go all the way into Circus Maximus. That's this little building right here. It's a little coliseum of sorts, I guess you could say, but this is the pet place in Pirate 101. Once you're inside the Circus Maximus, there is also a map for that. You can press M once again. You can go all the way to the Morphing Tent. Okay? 
this is where you morph good pets. Now, there are first generation pets, there are second generation pets, there are third generation pets. What you need to know is you just need to morph with pets that show the talents and powers that you want. And that's what matters. It doesn't really matter if your pet turns out to be a llama or a goat hippo. It really doesn't matter. No one cares. What really matters here is, you know, that it gives the talents and powers that you want. In this case, I've got Brutal Charge, Backstab, Burst Fire, Relentless, Bladestorm, and a lot of other good stuff. By the way, shout out to my stream. I stream at 5 p.m. Central Time each and every Friday, and I morph out some pretty amazing pets, or at least so I am told. Details in the description, of course. Now guys, another great thing about this guide is that there are some pieces of gear uh, that you can actually get at the Skull Island Bazaar for gold instead of having to take your chances by farming a boss and uh, spending, you know, hours and hours of your precious time. So, here we are. We are practically at the Skull Island Bazaar. Now once you're inside, you will go ahead and talk to this guy called Harvey Deuce by pressing X. As you can see, um, he sells, you know, hats, coats, boots, weapons, uh, totems, charms, and rings. And you can go ahead and use this little filter here to uh, find something high level. What you're looking for is something that's level 65. It's pieces of gear like this that usually give an ability. And I'll show you the gear that uh, you specifically want to buy, but there's also some other stuff you may want to buy, particularly for other classes, or at least, you know, keep around. I'll show you those in a picture, all right? Well, it turns out it's all good for hybrid melee musketeer. What a pleasant surprise. So buy all of it, and be sure to keep it all around. Next, guys, you'll want to farm a place called the Tower of Mu Manchu, and I am showing you right here the easy way uh, to get there. Alright, guys, now if you do have membership, you can go ahead and talk to um, Bratic May, this crocodile here, probably from Crocotopia, I don't know, but it's a cool little transporter, which I recommend taking advantage of. Uh, if you have membership, this actually costs gold, but it's also fairly cheap if you don't. It's only 100 crowns, and that's not very much. And what I recommend instead of traveling the full way is, you know, using the transporter. Here's um, Hamitsu Garden. Um, transport there. And that will, like, cut my traveling time in half. I'm going to take you to a place where uh, you can very quickly, where you can, where you can get, like, most of the gear that you need. Okay?
All right, guys, you can go ahead and farm this dungeon here. Looks pretty cool, huh? Well, there's also a lot of great gear that drops here that's uh, very much usable by um, Hybrid Melee Musketeer. Now, you will have to do a quest. Um, I'm going to look up exact name of the quest and where to get it, um, and I'll show you guys that in just a second. Um, but it's good to do this dungeon in a group of four, and... Um, you're almost guaranteed to get something good from it, and I'll show you exactly what you can get. Alright, guys. Now, if you have not done the quest for the Tower of Mu Manchu, you can join a group like I have done right here with your friend. Here, you can click this add group, and it'll put you in a group, and they can queue you up instead. As you can see, I am now in queue. Now, if the sigil did not appear, and if I had never done the quest, then this buddy over here, Bad Max Quinn, or whoever you have friended who has done the quest, can team you up. So that's a little trick you can do so you don't actually have to go through doing the entire quest. And so that, you know, you can just farm the dungeon without going through the large quest. That's a really big pain to do. So that's a little life hack for uh, Pirate 101 uh, Tower of Moon Manchu farming, and I hope that helps. Now, in case you guys insist on doing this the hard way, here's the quest line you guys would have to do in order to gain access to this dungeon. It looks pretty complicated, huh? It is. It is a huge pain to do, but I will show you how you can do it in the most efficient way possible. First of all, guys, I recommend you uh, do this dungeon when you are max level, level 70 at least. Um, now you do gain access to this dungeon at level 50, but I recommend maxing out your pirate before you even try and farm this place. And always farm with a group of four other at level 70 pirates. Now the first thing you'll want to do is go to a place in Mushu in Subata Skyway called Subata Temple. And once you've done that, you will enter a place called the Audience Chamber. And then you'll talk to an NPC called Lord Chagatai, who will give the quest the Mu Manchurian Candidate. And you will do this quest until you get the next quest. Next, you will go to an area in Hamamitsu Skyway Mushu called Hamamitsu Garden. And uh, you will go to the town hall where you will meet the NPC. Unambishi, or however you say the guy's name, who will give you the quest, the enemy unmasked. And you will do that quest until you get the next quest. You will go to an area in Subata Temple in Mushu. Uh, that's in Subata Skyway. And there's a place called the Library of Contemplation where you'll, you will find Quan Shi, uh, the librarian, who will give you the quest Emperor Mu. Now you will do this quest up until the point where you get your next quest. Right. And the last quest you'll need to do in order to basically access the dungeon Tower of Mu Manchu, which is a quest in and of itself, is um, the Call for Help quest. You'll find this guy in Avery's court called Mickey Dugan, who will give it to you, and you'll do it up to the point where you can actually enter the Tower of Wu Manchu. And when that happens, the sigil will appear, and you can farm that place as much as you want, with or without help. Alright, now, let's talk about what type of gear you want from this dungeon. So, the items that you want for the hybrid melee musketeer setup are the Jewel of Mu Manchu, which is a totem that gives Hail Cannonballs and Super Strike. And there's also a hat that you would want called the Corrupted Archer's Vestment that gives basically the same thing. Now, there are some other items uh, that you want to keep a hold of if you don't have them already, if they do drop. So be sure to put those items in lock as well. Now this is not really anything that you'll be using for your hybrid melee musketeer, but if this does drop in the Tower of Mu Manchu, I would go ahead and keep it around in case you end up making another class, or you just want to play musketeer in a different way. 
Um, but there are items that give two powers. Those are class specific gear, like you have a set for privateer, you have a set for swashbuckler, buccaneer, uh, witch doctor, musketeer. Um, I would recommend keeping at least one of each item around. Uh, you can move it around in sure bank, but it's nice to have, and it's, it's great if you don't have to farm for it again. All right, now there is some more um, exclusive gear. It's extra exclusive. It's dropped at two places in the entire dungeon. One of them is the Nefarious Five. They have a number of weapons. Um, I mean, it's nice to keep those around, but the only one that's actually very viable is the Nefarious uh, Knives. It's because it gives hide and flanking and a decent amount of damage. So it's a free hide. Most uh, swashbuckler weapons don't give very much, and this gives you a hide, so it's nice to have. Now, the Oni Bulwark is also okay, but, I mean, you can get the Gargoyle Shield from a pack pretty easily. Um, so if that drops, you may keep that around as well, or you may keep all the weapons around just for, you know, collecting. I mean, some people do that. Um, that being said, that pretty much covers the uh, nefarious uh, weapons. Um, there are a total of five you can get. Um, you know, it's cool to get the full collection. But I'm just telling you what's useful, and it's the nefarious knives. Now, there's also the stuff that you get from Mu Manchu himself. Now, the most prized drop is the Staff of Power for, for um, Swashbuckler. Now, all other classes, it looks cool, but it's not all that useful. There are better options. But the Staff of Power for Swashbuckler is really powerful because of Vengeance Shroud, which basically prevents the other team from healing for five turns. It's very powerful, particularly in um, 3v3s and 2v2s. Now, there's also the Frozen Tide Boots. Um, as you can see, they're amazing for PvE, but they're completely useless in PvP. And the other two items, the hat and the coat, um, they're more collector's items. They're okay, but um, I wouldn't stress about getting them at all. Uh, and, I don't know, maybe they have some stitch value, but that's pretty much it. All right, well, I accidentally forgot about the eye patches um, that are dropped in the Tower of Blue Manchu. Uh, Death's Bargain is really powerful for Privateer. Um, highly recommend to having it. Like, it does so much healing over the course of a game, particularly if you're doing a 1v1 versus a Buccaneer. Really important to have. Um... That being said, there are some other masks that do look kind of cool, but aren't particularly good for PvP or PvE. Um, at least in the way of doing speedruns, which is kind of what I do PvE-wise. I know ways to farm dungeons more efficiently and ways to basically um, uh, win, basically farm items in in game faster, and um, you know. Uh, finish the uh, storyline faster as well as well as do all my prom promotions and stuff so in that side of pve uh, there's no really uh good uh eye patches in the tower blue manchu soul shroud uh death's bargain um, this eye patch is really great for privateers uh the other ones kind of look cool and that's really all they have to say about it all right, guys, we're back in Avery's court. I'm going to show you how to get to the next dungeon now. Now, there's a guy called Ratbeard. And it turns out that he's not just a companion, but you can actually farm Ratbeard in his own dreams. Isn't that pretty cool? I think it is. Okay, so there's a certain weapon you can get from this dungeon. That I highly recommend. Not only is it super easy to get, but there are also two versions that are about as good. There is a shooty slashy version, and there is a shooty stabby version. Okay, it is a haywire weapon. It's the one I have equipped right now, and I'm going to show you where you need to farm and how to get there. Talking about these two sets of bad boys here. 
as you can see, we have the Haywire Swashbuckler set and the Haywire Armada Blade. Both are about as good, and as you can see, uh, with the Haywire Armada Blade, it may say strength if you equip it on your Buccaneer, but if you equip it on Musketeer or Swashbuckler, it'll switch right back to agility, so that's no concern. guys well here it is the door to the obsidian uh key boss as you can see there's like an obsidian like key knob right up here um but you have to do a certain quest in order to gain access to and i'll be um i'll be showing you that quest in just a second so you know what to do in order to gain access i think it has to do with promoting old scratch but i'll tell you for sure in a second all right, well, guys, it turns out I was right. So there is yet another reason to promote Old Scratch, uh, which I recommend doing in the first place. But uh, if you do not have access to this area or your Scratch is not promoted fully, then be sure to visit the tavern and go ahead and knock out his promotion so you can access this place. Trust me, it's worth it. All right, let's go ahead and go inside of the obsidian door. Now, there are actually three uh, little dungeons you can do. There is one that you can do um, that is kind of a raid dungeon, I guess you'd say. It's where you sink it with ships. It basically spawns in for a little while, uh, and then it goes away. So... It's very hard to time that, uh, so I do not recommend doing that particular dungeon. It's called Ashes of the Armada, or uh, Dreadnought. So, and the sigils that appear that allow you to farm it disappear very quickly. So, there are two places you can farm that are actually easier. My preference is Blightbeard. But there's also this character right here called um, Black Bonnie Ann. Um, she also drops it, but that dungeon is super hard. Now, uh, let's go over here to the dungeon we actually want to farm. This guy right called this guy called Blightbeard over here is much easier and much faster to farm. Now, all of these are beatable. But the ease and the speed at which you can farm this guy makes him your better choice. And he's actually a pretty decent companion, which you can actually buy this guy if you farm him 25 times. So if you want to do that, he's basically like another Pete or Temujin, except he has three super hits and he doesn't have the uh, Buccaneer's smash ability. So... He's pretty decent, and that's all i got to say as far as that goes. Now, you will need an obsidian key, and that is actually a housing item. Matter of fact, it is a wall hanging, so be sure to check your wall hangings and make sure that you keep around your obsidian keys to farm this dungeon. Now, I do recommend farming this dungeon in a group of four, um, because you'll get more gold, you'll get more script. Um, and not only that is if an obsidian key drops from this dungeon, then you'll have four people with an obsidian key and you can farm it four more times. Same deal with Brass Monkey, the guy that I made just a little while ago. So, and if you haven't seen that guide, I will try and link it down below in the description. Now, just a reminder, guys, you're farming for these weapons here, the Haywire Swash buckler set and the haywire armada blade it doesn't matter what you get but it makes a great hybrid melee musketeer weapon so keep an eye out for that but also keep an eye out for these weapons the haywire thunder rifle and the haywire occultist uh, set all right back to avery's court and uh well we are actually going back to the frozen docks Remember that place? That's where Mu Manchu is. 
Um, but there's another guy in the exact same area called Lopan. Matter of fact, I recommend buying the area. Um, even if you are a uh, membership player, unless you plan on regularly uh, renewing your membership. Because this area has um, basically most of the gear, PvP, and PvE in the entire game that's actually good. Um, so, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to Hamamitsu Garden. Guys, here we are, Temple of the West Wind. There are a lot of great pieces of gear. The main piece of gear, obviously, uh, is this little piece right here called Valor's Fortress. But there are also some Assassin Strike Boots, which are also nice to have. This is the real prize, because, you know, there are a number of other things you could put in for boots. Uh, so yeah, that's who you want to farm, and once again, farm in a group of four if you possibly can. Now guys, before I show you some of the other great gear that drops in this dungeon, um, I want to address an issue. Now, in my previous guides, I would link Pirate 101 Central, and I would tell you to look up the gear. However, I realize that is no longer realistic, because Pirate 101 Central Wiki is now more bugged than the game itself. As you can see, different parts are like cut off. The images and stuff like that so you can't see anything most of the time and you can't even make a pirate 101 central account anymore because of the uh cap shoot uh like bot protector or something like that like, like that like that whole thing is bugged like more than pirate 101 by the way shout out to pirate 101 for um outdoing pirate 101 central man Appreciate all of you guys' hard work. You know, I realize there may be a lot of bugs in both things, and it's a lot of hard work trying to fix those bugs. And just everything you guys do, like anything you guys do for this game, and Pirate 101 Central, anything you guys do for this website, you know, props to you. Thank you. You're doing this for free, basically. It's a free game. It's a free website. I'm not hating on you guys. I mean, heck, we even have Wizard 101 players that don't play Pirate 101 hosting tournaments paying their own money to, you know, provide crowns for tourna tournaments just so that, you know, us Pirate 101 players will have something to do. You know, we have a lot of great people helping us out in the community. Shout out to Celestial Moon. Thanks for doing that, by the way. Uh, and, uh, yeah, shout out to Pirate 101 Central, man. I would be using them right now if their website actually worked. Alright guys, since I can't actually look up each piece of gear and everything, maybe this is actually a better way to do it. Um, look for pieces of gear that drop any of these four powers. Valor's Fortress, Assassin's Strike, or Big Guns. And put those items on lock, okay? Put those items on lock so that you have them around for if you make another pirate. Um, you just don't know what will happen, and they're all great pieces of gear, so... 
I mean, some of them are for Buccaneers, some of them are for Swashbucklers. It doesn't matter the class. If it gives any of these three powers, keep them around. You'll thank me later. And like I said, guys, earlier, farm this dungeon in a group of four because you can get um, group loot chests. And it's a level 40 group loot chest, so you're more likely to get hats, boots, and robes that give these powers if you do farm in a group of four. Alright guys, we are on to the next place to farm. It's um, a place in Cool Ranch, Santa Polo, uh, called Santa Rana. He drops a couple of good things, uh, so I'm going to take you there. Santa Rena. All right, so this is the gear you're looking for. So anything that gives Valor armor um, that drops from this guy or anywhere else in Cool Ranch, for that matter, or anywhere else really, uh, Valor armor is just an all-around really good power to have. Um, so yeah, if you get any of that, uh, keep it around for sure. Also, if you get rings, totems, or charms that give Walk and Darkness. Keep those around too because you can't buy walk and darkness gear in the school island bazaar now for hats boots and coats you can so that's the reason why i keep the charms totems and rings that give walk and darkness also there's an exclusive um boss item i guess you would say uh called santa reina's hat that gives overwatch and it's just a fun little hat to have. It looks really cool. And it's great for PvE in particular because you can use it to get Overwatch 5 if you get, you know, the Death, the Darkmoor Death Spitter or whatever it's called. And you get an Overwatch pet and you train, you know, two Overwatches from the Hidden Trainer, which I think I'll be showing you how to get to the Hidden Trainer and how the Hidden Trainer works later on in this video. Don't worry about that for now. Know that if you get Santa Rana's hat, Valor armor gear, or charms, rings, and totems that give um, walk and darkness. That all those are good drops. Now, some of the gear that uh, has Valor armor on it uh, basically drops at a level 15 boss, and it's all the level 15 uh, Valor armor gear. I'll be taking you to that location. And there's also some level. Um, 30 gear that drops at two different uh, places that gives Valor's armor and walk and darkness as well. So I'm going to quickly take you to those places, but it's basically the same stuff that's in this picture, minus the boss exclusive loot, except that it's, it, it's at a different level. But this game is about powers, not so much about stats, so I wouldn't worry too much. It's all good gear. All right, guys, there's a boss called Johnny Ringo. And he dropped some of the Valor armor gear that I talked about. And I'm going to go ahead and take you there. Johnny Ringo at the clock house. All right. And of course, for some of the level 30 gear that I mentioned, uh, Walk in Darkness and Valor Armor gear, uh, I'm going to take you to a guy called Tyson, who's also nice to farm.
Tyson. Again, farm them in a group of four. Best way to do it. The old trip place is next place will take you. Uh, it's a great place as well. You fight some of the Broncos here. Um, and they drop like totems and rings and other stuff that, you know, aren't common drops at, you know, other level 30 bosses. So I do recommend farming this guy, even though he is a dungeon. Alright. This guy is a boss called Disclose. He's basically Orthrus, a, um, a three or two headed dog, I forgot which, but um, he drops some eye patches and stuff. He's probably one of the best uh, uh, places to farm for an Aqua eye patch. And there's like one quest, and all you have to do is claim it. Um, I think it's called Night Stalker or something like that. You claim it from a guy called Ethemos. All you have to do is claim the quest so that you can farm the guy. So I'm going to go ahead and take you to that place. There's also some other good gear that drops there. So one of these guys, oh, there he is, Ethemos. Um, Ethemos uh, gives the quest to do this guy, and you don't really have to do much except claim it. All right, now we're at this list. I disconnected for a bit, so this is where you fight him. All right, here's a look at what he drops for Hybrid Melee Musketeer. Uh, we have Orthrus' Sinister Eye Patch. It is probably the best hybrid melee musketeer eye patch for pretty much every situation, really. Then, of course, you get TT's Blind Luck. That eye patch is um, also pretty good. I mean, it's not as good most of the, in most situations, at least. Uh, and as I said before, Ethemus gives the quest Nightcrawler, and it drops from Discolos. That is the name of the boss, and there is a picture of him. Now, he also does drop, uh, like, eye patches for other classes as well. So, um, keep an eye out for any eye patches and other gear that give these powers, and um, go ahead and keep them around with them unlocked. And this goes for pretty much all the Aqua bosses. Um, that way, you know, if it drops, you don't have to farm it again. You know, if you make another class, for example. All right, I'm going to show you guys where to get the uh, Quick Adjust and uh, True Grit gear uh, from a guy called Kane. Uh, you farm him at the machine, and I'm going to go ahead and direct you to where that dungeon is. Currently, he is actually the last boss in the entire game. Should be pretty easy to find, but I'll add this just in case.
All right, well, we're a cane. Drop some good stuff. Here's a look at some of that stuff. So what's good for a hybrid melee musketeer in general is um, anything that gives quick adjust and true grit. Um, there are several pieces that do that. Uh, and for other classes, I mean, if you plan on making anything later, I mean, I would just keep them around anyway. Uh, but these pieces here, the ones that give uh, Triton's Course and um, Sunder and Strike, uh, the ones that give Hold the Line and First Mate's Boon, and the ones that give uh, Widow's Touch and um, uh, Heat Metal. It's really nice to have. So keep a hold of those. And also, um, there's a piece of gear that's a uh, great collector value, Gain's Mask. But it's also good for 4v4s because of the fort glitch. And um, I'm going to explain that. Uh, it's not that we try and exploit the scheme or anything, but there's an unavoidable glitch in the game that they've literally not fixed for like four years at least, called the fort glitch, which basically makes it so that um, timed protections um, that basically block a percentage of damage, like Valor's Fortress, uh, never wear off. Like, the display wears off, but the effects do not. So this does include, like, um, Buccaneer abilities like Kraken's, uh, like Kraken's Armor and um, Leviathan's Call, and in this case, also Kane's Mask. So, literally, um, all Tyne protections that block a percentage of damage do not actually wear off. Their effects don't. So, that being said, Kane's Mask, the fact that it only gives a 50 round protection for one turn, it really doesn't matter. It makes it good because it's permanent. Now, I would like it if King Zhao would fix it, but since they won't uh, anytime soon, um, go ahead and take advantage of it. Uh, other people take advantage of the fort glitch. I mean, the only way to not do that is completely ban forts from 4v4s, and we've made enough special rules already to where that would be absolutely ridiculous. All right, guys. Well, let us have a look at the crown shop now. Um, a lot of items in this game um, that you do not want to farm for it. Um, have other options like there's second loot chests, which I highly recommend using um, because when you convert um, time to money, you realize that it's a much better deal to just drop crowns into the second loot ch chest. Like even if you know you are you know converting that time into minimum wage, you know it's it's a way better deal, and it helps support the game as well. So that's another reason you might consider doing it. Also, if you, you know, are struggling and you just are willing to do with subpar gear, which, you know, skill is, after all, more important than gear. Uh, that being said, you may consider um, buying one of the weapons here in the crown shop. Uh, this one right here, the Helios set. Costs about five, ten bucks, depending on if it's on sale or not, and it does a decent amount of damage. Like it, I mean, it may not be as good as the Haywire Swashbuckler set, but you know, if if you're having trouble getting it to drop, you might as well use this in the meanwhile. So, fairly cheap. Uh, same thing with the Saint Fido's eye patch, right here. Once again, this eye patch is better than no eye patch. So, you know, if you just aren't getting lucky with um, eye patches, you know, go ahead and give this a try. It's like $2.50 when it's on sale. So, yeah, highly recommend using that. And definitely use second loot uh, chests when you're farming, for sure. All right, so there's a guy called Sato that drops Black Rain Shades. They look super cool, but they're also really good in 3v3 because of the current um, slow and corner meta. You want to get down the field as quickly as you can, and with Black Rain Shades, you can just teleport. It's also good for farming Black Bunny in, which I might do a guide for sometime in the near future, so keep an eye out for it. Now I'll show you how to get there. 
at the Orchid Tea Room. Now if you go all the way to the top, you'll fight this guy called Sato, um, and he drops these, the Black Rain Shades, um, which give a Shadow Step. Now Shadow Step is really good, and it's um, quite an underrated power because you can literally move all the way down the field, even if you're slowed, using this power. Um, so particularly in PvP, 3v3 PvP to be more specific, it's really powerful. Um, that being said, it's not just PvP. Uh, it's also PvE that you can use this on because there is a boss called uh, Black Bonnie Ann, and if you teleport to the right places um, using this power, you can basically um, prevent your pirate from being bombed. And uh, let's say Black Bonnie Ann drops a lot of uh, bombs, so uh, it's a great tool for farming that particular dungeon, and I will maybe make a guide on that sometime soon. That being said, there's the eye patch of recuperation. Now, this eye patch is um, so far the best eye patch for witch doctors in the game right now, uh, based on the fact that it gives revive. Uh, there are a few other options; they just aren't nearly as good. So, it's good for PvP. It's good for PVE. Do save this eye patch if you get it, and uh, especially if you plan on making a witch doctor. While we're on the topic of eye patches, um, I forgot to mention that uh, Kane, the fight that I mentioned earlier that drops um, some of your True Grit uh, Quick Adjust gear, also drops this uh, eye patch here that gives uh, Dispel Magic. It's a really common drop in that dungeon, um, but there is indeed another dungeon called Bishop. Um, I do not recommend farming Bishop, so I will not show you how to get there. Because you can get the same Technomage's glasses uh, at Kane, which you kind of already have to farm for the other gear. Uh, that being said, uh, it's useful for removing things like a Swashbuckler's Curse, um, so that you can heal again. Um, if you have Accuracy or a Dodge Reduce, uh, sometimes it's good for removing that. Um, I'm not sure if it's hugely useful in uh, PvE situations, but for PvP it's definitely nice to have around. And these um, particular glasses also look really cool. And who knows, you may find them useful later on when, you know, um, the game updates and they're like new bosses. We don't know what the future of this game is. It does look good, but... Um, uh, we don't know exactly uh, what we will be seeing, so keep these around. I have a hunch they'll be useful even in PvE. Well guys, there's another eye patch if you want to use companions other than Musketeer companions. Um, it's called the Great Juju eye patch. You can get it from probably a guy called Tyler who also drops stuff that's great for Musketeer in general. Um, but it's also great for other classes. Um, there is um, an eye patch for Buccaneer that has Assassin Strike that is very much prized. And if you make a Buccaneer, that is the best eye patch for Buccaneer. So here's a look at them. All right, as you can see, um, the uh, highlighted eye patches, the ones that are circled in red, those are a nice tab for a hybrid melee musketeer. Um, but Schemer's eye patch is prized, as I said before. There's also a special branch ribbon 
a special special branch um, badge and I guard a deflection. Um, so it turns out there are two charms in there that are also nice to have. Um, so yeah, if you farm this guy, keep an eye out for those drops. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and cover pretty much the only good bundle that you can buy, um, particularly for Hybrid Melee Musketeer, but pretty much for every class. It's the Empire Bundle. It gives a great companion called Nazca. has the most movement in the entire game when it comes to companions. So, 7 movement. Yes, it's really powerful. Uh, when used correctly, that is. You can't just, you know, buy this and expect to win every match. But, it's fun to have. It also gives, um, some replacement items for some of the gear I mentioned um, with slightly better stats in some areas so um, definitely worth the um, $30 $40 I should say um, if you do plan on buying it but um, sometimes it's also on sale sometimes it's it's half off and when it is half off I definitely recommend taking advantage of sorry for the gritty little picture there but um, once again I am grabbing this off the Pirate 101 website, which I'll link down below in the, in the description, of course. Okay, guys, now there's this guy right here called Trusty Flint Locket here in the Brawling Hall. Matter of fact, I will take you outside in a second so you can see how to get here. Um, but you can do rank PvP, obtain ranks, and you can buy some of the gear. Now, I'm just letting you guys know in case you may ask this question, because several of y'all are probably wondering, is any of this PvP gear good? The answer is no. It's all, you know, trash. But it does look cool, and you can try and get it to stitch. Um, now, do they ever have good gear that this guy sells? Yes. They've had some recent weapons that give... Um, a five round poison there is a hybrid weapon uh that you can get here uh, from time to time um just keep an eye out here and if it makes sense um try and try and see if it's an effective weapon or if it's effective piece of gear test it out let me know what you think because i know there will be other sets of gear in the future um, so i felt like this had to be addressed Alright, now I'd like to take you guys um, to the place where I just was, where you could get, you know, like some gear for doing PvP. I want to take you to another place that's also very underrated. It needs to be considered by all players, PvP and PvE. Now, why is this? Well, believe it or not, PvP affects PvE more than you would think. That is the reason why, as I said in my other video, that games that have some type of PvP system tend to be better as PvE games as well. Now, let me explain why this is the case. Because in a PvP community, you get the scrutiny that you do not get in a PvE community. So if you have an idea as to certain game mechanics, certain strategies and stuff like that, you can actually test them out on intelligent players who can show you their flaws. It's kind of like a guy who tinkers around in his garage compared to a scientific community where different studies are posted and scrutinized. Which do you think is more effective? Well, the scientific community is much more effective as we've seen in real life. Same thing for PvP versus PvE. I'm not saying this to hate on PvE players. There is certainly a reason to do PvE the same as there's a reason to have fun and tinker around in your garage. I think that when you're first getting your feet wet with this game, doing the mainline story quest is the way to go and that should be very easy because you are completely new to the game and I think that it should be as enjoyable as possible. And I really think that considering PvP um, is a great way to go as far as how to balance the game. Um, so that is one reason why you may want to get into it. Not only that, is when you talk to a PvP player, um, 
then you'll also realize that that same PvP player is also an excellent PvE player too. In fact, oftentimes they're better at PvE than players that exclusively do PvE. Um, so, yeah. Now, I do have a very strong opinion about this. My intention is not to, of course, offend anyone. So I want to clarify something. I very much appreciate all the hard work that King Zhao does on this game. Them and all their great employees. That being said, I do fault them for one thing. The fact that none of their KI employees are top players in this game. I'm saying like top 25 um, uh, players, like, like they should be in the top 25. That's what I'm saying. They need someone at least in the top 25. Um, and it's not too hard to be within the top 25 in a game, basically, that was designed for children. Especially when you're an adult and you are very intelligent. People who code tend to be very intelligent. Uh, many of the people who got their jobs at King Zhao for other things, um, also very intelligent. I mean, go ahead and check out their link. This should not be hard for them, and it wouldn't be hard for them. So I do highly recommend that, you know, um, you know, have at least one King's Isle employee who can give a little more perspective based off of the PvP community, and that would help them improve their PvE and their PvP. Um, so uh, that's my little rant about the Brawling Hall. You can buy weapons from this guy. You can do PvP and get some cool stuff from this guy right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Spar Chamber. Um, but first, I want to address the issue many of you guys may have, you know, as far as toxic players in this community. Well, it turns out, and I can't believe people haven't seen this sooner, but there is actually a block button. You can literally ignore people in this game so you do not have to deal with them anymore. It's a great feature. You know, I use it a lot. Here's a look at some of the people I have on my list. Um, definitely worth blocking those players because they consistently cause trouble. Um, not just in the PvP community. I'm sure you've seen toxic people in the PvE community as well. Um, maybe it's a little easier to avoid, but Nonetheless, it is it, it is easy to avoid toxic players in general. You can just put them on your ignore list. Oh, and want me to show you another trick? When you have these people on your ignore list, you can see their gear when they're online. So you can PvP them, and you can always see their gear. Fun fact. Sometimes I have people on my ignore list that I actually like, you know? Like, I don't really, um... Like, um... I look at it as, as, as an extended friend list sometimes. I know that's not the original intent, um, and I'm not bad. I'm not going to badmouth, you know, all the people on my ignore list, okay? So I just wanted to clear that up. Sometimes I legitimately use it as a PvP tool. Okay, now we are in the spar chamber here. Let me talk about the spar chamber and why it is really nice. Well, it turns out there are some mechanics and there are some factors in this game that are straight up broken and that should never have been in this game. Now I addressed as to why you may have these issues because there are no um, top rated uh, PvP players on the King's Isle staff. Unfortunately, once again, I do appreciate all their hard work, but I mean, come on guys. Okay, so that being said, we avoid these by banning them in PvP matches. Oftentimes, we host our own tournaments where we have plenty of free prizes, um, crowns, membership, um, exclusive items, bundles, packs, um, you name it. If you like free stuff, keep an eye out for those. I'll try and keep you posted too on my Twitter, Discord, um, and this YouTube channel. I love promoting these events. They're very good for the community. So that's why these two areas are very special, and why they help both the PvP community and the PvE community. That being said, PvE may be your thing, and PvP may not be your be your thing. In that case, I mean, the, the stuff that I'm saying is still very relevant. If you completely avoid PvP, then the PvP players in the PvP community are actually improving the um, PvE community as well. 
So, I am very glad I've cleared that up, and I hope to move on to the rest of the video, which will be helpful for everyone once again. All right, guys, now that I've gone over where to get all the gear, and I've gone over some of the items that drop those dungeons. I want to run you through a quick review of everything I have by basically scrolling my mouse over what I have in my backpack. Okay, so um, here we go. And those are my hats. You can pause at any point if you want to have a closer look. And here are my boots. Here are some weapons. Here are some eye patches. Here are some totems. Here are some charms. Here are some rings. Oh, and mounts aren't really important, but I think these look cool. Pets. These two are the pets I use. Everything else over here is just stuff that I'm training right now. Um, so that's it. There is the gear review. Okay. So I want to discuss two things here in this little clip. First, if you were to choose an origin, which origin would you want to choose? Now, it turns out the best origin for pretty much all classes, uh, certainly the strongest buff, is naturally spooky because it gives a percent buff to spooky. And there are a lot of powers, no matter which class you are. If you're a swashbuckler, um, it uh, improves your poisons. If you're any other class, or if you're a swashbuckler, if you're a witch doctor especially, but um, it improves Valor armors, revives. Um, if you're a musketeer or a privateer, it also improves your bombs. Um, just a lot of abilities. Assassin strikes, um, the bleeding part of it is um, actually based off of mojo power. So definitely the strongest buff, and I recommend getting this if you when you make a pirate. However, if you make a pirate and you give it something else, it is not worth deleting that pirate or starting a new pirate just because it does not have naturally spooky. I'm just letting you guys know what the best origin is. So if you guys are making a brand new pirate just for this hybrid melee musketeer setup or for any setup, now you guys know. Now, because this setup is hybrid melee instead of standard, I do have big choppy weapon trained and some other stuff. Um, which was necessary in order to basically get Relentless. One Relentless comes from the trainer, the hidden trainer, which I'll be showing you um, how to get to in just a bit. And the other one comes from my pet. I also train Burst Fire from the hidden trainer. And by the way, the hidden trainer um, changes every hour. There's like one for witch doctors, there's one for... Um, for uh, musketeers, and there's one for melee classes. So they all come up every single hour. Um, so that's you know why I did train Big Choppy Weapon and some other stuff so I could get to this Relentless. Now, here's a look at some of the other stuff you may benefit from training. Um, you have um, Fast 2, and you have to train some stuff in order to get that. One of them is, of course, Stabby Weapons. Uh, fast 2 is pretty much something you want on all of your pirates, um, because you can move down the field faster, and that is a huge advantage for PvP and PvE. Um, I also have this Witch Hunter trained, which is also kind of nice. Uh, and what else do I have? Um, guys, if you have not trained Double Tap um, 3, I do not recommend doing it. Now, it's too late for me, but let me explain why you do not want Double Tap 3. Now, Double Tap 3 swaps the accuracy to dodge ratio with the base stat, in this case, agility. Now, the problem with that is that a lot of units in this game have a lot of agility. You face a lot of swashbucklers and buccaneers, particularly in PvP. So, the only way this would ever benefit you is versus a privateer. Now, it's not that big of a deal, okay? It's really not. But the thing is, is that musketeers have a lot of accuracy, so why would you switch it out for your base stat? Um, it doesn't really make any sense. Uh, so that pretty much covers, you know, the talents that you want to train. Um, 
when I skip the balloons because those aren't important. Now, as for uh, powers, um, there are a few things you want to train. I would train up to to Ruse and um, Veiler Shield from the Privateer Trainer. And I would definitely train uh, Walking uh, Shadows from the Swashbuckler Trainer. Um, and that's pretty much it ability-wise. This also comes from the um, Swashbuckler Trainer. And this comes from the Privateer Trainer. Um, so that covers you know everything that you want to use your training points on. Now, I will have a guide in the description um, for each and every single one of the Prospector Zeke quests. Um, and it shows you exactly where to find everything in order for you to get your uh, practice points. So be sure to have a look at that in the description if you're not sure how to do those quests. Um, I'll like put a playlist or I'll post the, the videos individually. Uh, but it'll be there in the description, so be sure to check it out. I'm going to be showing you guys how to get to the Hidden Trainer now. Alright guys, I'm going to show you where the Hidden Trainer is at now. Um, can't use the Transportaler, unfortunately. That would uh, be ironic if you could, considering it is the uh, Hidden Trainer. There are actually three of them, and they change out each hour. Um, there is a Witch Doctor 1, there is a Musketeer 1, and then there is one for uh, melee classes. So you may have to set your um, mark there and, um, you know, come back every hour so that you can get the trainers that uh, you want. Now, it turns out that um, for the you'll, you'll want to be going to the melee trainer and the uh, Musketeer trainer. Um, and also, if you have an extra point, go to the Witch Doctor Trainer as well for uh, Witch Hunter. So that's, uh, that's what I recommend. Witch Doctor Trainer. Remember, it does uh, change out every um, hour, so um, you may have to wait here a couple of hours, or you may have to set your mark. Um, but this is the location where you train um, your Relentless, your Burst Fire, and potentially your Witch Hunter. Alright guys, um, something you may benefit a lot from is knowing a good deck setup. So, um, you press P here, and here's a look at how I currently have my powers arranged. This is one of many setups. Um, you notice that I'm lacking Valor's armor. I could equip that if I feel like the match requires it. But notice how I have my uh, powers balanced. I have a line of forts going down um, the first page. I have some melee attacks right here. And then, of course, I have hides right here and some trick shots. And of course some heals right here. So basically I bounce my powers throughout and I tend to put the better versions of each power all the way on the first row because it's more vital that you pull these powers first. Uh, and here's a look at the second page and the third page is pretty much, you know, the stuff that you want to use last. Now, if you do have Ratbeard on your team, you may put the bear trap a little further up so you can rat trap combo. Basically, what that means is Ratbeard has um, an ability that knocks players back, and sometimes you can knock them back into a trap and do massive damage. Um, so that is a viable strat. Um, for 3v3s, uh, you may want to put your um, AoE attacks a little further up, as well as for 4v4s, of course. Um, first off, um, I don't really think that um, Hybrid Melee Musketeer is you know, as good in team battles as in 1v1. First off, it's more of a troll PvP setup. It's not something like serious. It's just something to play the game a little bit differently and have a little bit of fun. That's all it really is. Um, and of course, you know, PvE players, you know, you can play this and it's always going to be effective. 
Um, but yeah, that's just an idea of what a setup may look like. Now, as far as the gear goes to wear this setup, just whatever you want in your deck, equip the gear in order to get that. And that's how you determine what gear to wear. It doesn't matter if you get your fort from um, a totem, a charm, or a ring. Uh, what matters is you get your fortress, your Valor Fortress, this ability here, from, you know, wherever you have to get it. Same with any other ability. Um, and always have a reason for why you have your deck set the way it is. Have your better powers up first. Um, and uh, that's what I have to say about about creating a good deck for Hybrid Melee Musketeer, or any class for that matter. All right, guys, we're on to companions. Um, just press U in order to get to that. Now, um, first companion we'll be having a look at is this guy called Exeter. Now, in the future, I do plan on making guides uh, that are specific to each companions with more details and stuff like that. Um, and maybe I'll be able to consolidate those like in links and stuff below in the description or something like that. Who knows? I'll cross that bridge when I get to it, but um, I really like having Exeter. He's probably the best companion you can currently buy in the crown shop. And this is for a number of reasons. The first and most important one is because of this ability called Maelstrom. Now, particularly in team battles, slowing the opponent's team with a 50% first turn uh, basically allows you to charge across the map without fear of being countercharged. Uh, particularly on Musketeers, uh, where you can corner an opponent with bombs, it's uh, really effective. Uh, the second thing is something called Musketeers Metley, and it reduces um, damage for 50 uh, by 50 percent for three turns. Uh, it also reduces will, but you know it's not like no one really cares about the will reduction all that much. Um, it's mostly for the damage reduction. But still, really nice to have. Um, he also has another super hit. As you can see, he's really good as a True Grit 3 uh, companion, and I recommend giving him all these talents. Now, Ratbeard. Ratbeard's set differently on Musketeers in general. Um, but Hybrid Melee Musketeer, honestly, you could actually go with Repel Borders 3, since uh, you can't rely on your own Overwatch. That being said, I still have mine set like a standard Musketeer. Uh, and here a look at the epics. So if you had a standard musketeer, then I would run this uh, setup for sure. For hybrid melee musketeer, there's a good chance it's a good idea if you actually use uh, repel borders um, three instead of hold the line three. So uh, here is a look at the talents, uh, and you know. He has some good stuff like knockback. I mentioned the rat trap um, combo earlier. Clear the decks is um, is is what's used in the rat trap combo. Of course, a reduce and a super, and you know he's got tied. So uh, that's a that's a look at Ratbeard. Great companion. Highly recommend having him around. Now Chantel Livingston is. Um, the best damage carry in the game currently. I mean, two sniper so shots and a super, uh, not to mention her cloud spirit, and she's got some great epics. I mean, look at that. She's basically she basically has all the required chaining epics plus you know two Overwatch and a one quick adjust in case she misses. So she's pretty much got everything covered. I mean, she doesn't have any real reactionary epics. Um, I mean, it's not really worth going into those for Chantel. Um, I mean, if you find something that works, I mean, I think she can get like Quick Draw or something like that, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, go for it, but that's currently how I have her set up. Again, guys, expect guys in the future. I'll be examining each champion and doing a lot of experiments and research on them sometime in the future, but for now, I'm just giving you guys a basic overview. Now here's Bonnie Ann. Now I use my Bonnie Ann for Counter Musketeer. There is another setup where you can actually do Overwatch 3 instead of Quick Draw 3. And basically, you know, everything else is the same. 
um, that does work and it's great as uh, a counter um, charging um, companion if you do that. That being said, here's a look at what she has and what I've given her. So that is Bunny and essentially. Um, and Contessa here. Contessa uh, is one of those companions you love to have as Musketeer in particular because uh, you can, you know, deter your enemies through pressure of walk and darkness and backstab, but you can also uh, protect your pirate for a couple of turns using gallant defense. Um, you just put your uh, pirate against the wall and then you'll pop gal. So that's uh that's what i gave mine also one of the benefits is that uh, you can always walk your contessa through bombs and stuff and she takes less damage another very valid use uh here's a companion called nazca now i did mention the empire bundle earlier and uh this is a companion that literally has the most movement in the entire game um now the map is not particularly large in the first place, so it doesn't make this champion like super powerful. Um, but this is how I have mine set up. I have basically a counter musketeer Nazca. I do not recommend getting True Grit three um, because if you charge, you have all these uh, you have all these shots that basically guarantee criticals. So one one double tap tends to guarantee like full chains. Um, and the thing about Nausicaa is, is, you know, if, 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 uh, well, the thing about her is, is that the True Grits being two prevents the stun as she would otherwise do. And if she has, and if she could basically con consistently use her True Grits, that means she's likely to get her other chains as well. So that's my logic for why I have my Nausicaa set up this way, particularly on um, this hybrid melee musketeer. Now, there are some situations, I'm sure, where it's nice to have Grit 3 instead of this double tap right here, but um, that's uh, that's the way I have my, my uh, Nazca set up for now, and it seems to be working pretty well. Um, now, we're going to go ahead and move on to this guy here called Temujin. Now, Temujin, um, he's... Uh, great buccaneer companion this is how i recommend setting him up now he doesn't have a lot of movement so that is probably his main weakness but he is an overall uh, great companion to have coronando is another fun companion to use um, and here's how i would have him set up now i like bladestorm 3 on my grow because what Bladestorm does is it swaps out the accuracy accuracy to dodge ratio for the base stat ratio, which is which is in this case strength. So it means that he hits his blade storms off of strength, uh, not uh, not accuracy. So, which is really good because he charges musketeers with Overwatch three all the time. So super important to have Bladestorm three. Now, I don't have Relentless 3 because um, it doesn't really seem to work. Like, it's supposed to increase your chance of getting Relentless by 35%. However, I have done a lot of PvP, and I have experimented with both setups before. I would have to say that Hold the Line is um, another power that's super useful. And it really can't backfire. Bladestorm can backfire, Relentless can backfire, um, Bendit Strike can backfire, um, Repost can backfire, First Strike can backfire, but uh, Hold the Line is a pretty consistent power. It's a very easy power to control and it can really mess up your opponents. So I have Hold the Line 1, Relent 2, Bladestorm 3 for that reason. And of course here's a look at some of the other stuff he has and how I have him set up. All right, moving right along to Zeng Cha. Okay, well, Zeng Cha is an interesting bird. The um, thing about him is that he probably has some hidden critical stats, because I've never really seen a Buccaneer Companion critical nearly this much. I don't know what it is, but Peter Quint does not critical so much on 
nearly as frequent of a basis. I don't know why. Like, he's a good companion and all, but Sang Cha has, like, everyone beat. Um, and here's a look at how I have him set up. He's very much like Temujin, but once again, he has Blade Storm 3 instead of the whole Vengeance Strike setup. So he's more of a counter musketeer companion, you may say. But even so, he does have bad movements, so it makes him not very viable um, in certain situations. So here is El Toro. El Toro is okay to have. You don't really need an accuracy buff as a hybrid melee musketeer because musketeers um, only miss every once in a blue moon because um, they have ridiculous amounts of accuracy in the first place. Now, dodge is not going to help them that much. Um, I mean, it may a little bit. I'm not saying that, you know, it's not going to help them at all. But, I mean, come on. Who's going to miss a mus musketeer? I mean, especially a musketeer without Overwatch. It's just probably not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, El Toro. Now, Lulapisk, um, I would give him quick draw three for sure. Probably return fire and double tap too. Um, standard musketeer talents, you know, dodgy, um, accurate, uh, rough, tough, and that's how I'd set. Maybe if there's like a last point or something like that, I would go ahead and put it towards um, agility. All right, and then of course, old scratch. I'm not going to actually show you the setup because I don't want to throw you off. The way I have my old scratch set up on this character is really bad. Um, I just was, you know, too lazy to actually bother to set him up the way he would be ideally. Because I don't really even use his companion for anything besides PvE. Um, and mostly just for these buffs here. The Mo Mojo Flow. So that my bombs do more damage. So, yeah. Um, those are the most important companions uh, for Hybrid Melee Musketeer. They're what I have lying around. And, you know, if you're going to um, if you want to work on some companions for Hybrid Melee Musketeer, these are some great recommendations for you. All right. All right, so before I wrap up this video, I want to show you guys something really cool that you may have not known about. Did you know you can order yourself a Pirate 101 t-shirt off the website itself? Just go to the shop and go to merchandise and you can purchase a really nice looking t-shirt for about $23. So if you really feel if you real if you're really passionate about this game and you want to advertise it, this is a great way to do so while supporting um, the company that works on our game. Um, so yeah, um, I'm thinking about getting one myself sometime soon. Um, I don't know, maybe when I get a little extra money sometime, I'll uh, spend it on the shirt. Um, but I just thought it looked really cool, and I wanted to share that with you guys. All right, guys, um, let me know if there was anything I missed in this video. Um, I did... Um, just about as well as I could um, to cover everything I can really think of that may help you with your hybrid melee musketeer or Pirate 101 in general. I may break this down into smaller videos in the future and improve upon them. Um, so any feedback you guys have is much appreciated. That being said, please do like, subscribe, share this if you thought it was helpful on social medias like Twitter, uh, Facebook, Reddit, um, all that is very much appreciated. I'm sure the players that will be helped by this um, would also appreciate it. And, you know, come to the live streams. Get yourself a pet morph. Um, I mean, it's not just me who morphs pets at the uh, pet morph giveaways. It's other people in the community. So you'll always find something good to morph with. Um, that being said... Um, this has been your friend and pal Fearsome here, uh, making yet another Pirate 101 video, because goodness knows I love this game. Peace. <laughs>